And when we look within atherosclerotic plaques, we see clear evidence of these blood clots. We see the presence of platelets, which are fragments that play a key role in initiating blood clotting. And we see fibrin, which forms fibrous strands that binds it all together. This study, for example, surgically removed sections of atherosclerotic plaque and found clear evidence of all of these ingredients deep within. They obtained further definitive proof of the presence of red blood cells by using a brown stain for a chemical called glycophorin A, a chemical only found in red blood cells. Look at all the brown. Conclusive proof of degraded red blood cells deep within a plaque. It clearly describes the central accumulation of red blood cell membrane within atherosclerosis. Furthermore, the investigators also injected red blood cells into animal models of atherosclerosis and found that this blood injection produced plaques containing both cholesterol crystals and foam cells. The upshot of all of this is that thrombosis, or blood clots, are central to the development of atherosclerosis. And so, clotting risk, what we call a pro-coagulant tendency, must too be a risk for atherosclerosis. So this raises the question, how do the lipid risk factors for heart disease that we all know about relate to clotting tendency, if at all? Now, you may have seen one of my previous lectures where I talk about the validity of triglycerides and HDL as markers of cardiovascular risk. Essentially, there's robust evidence that high triglycerides and low HDL is associated with an increased risk of heart disease. So I began to explore whether these metrics had any association at all with the risk of blood clotting. If they don't, then this whole clot theory goes down the drain, except they do. And I didn't have to look very far. Literally dozens of papers have been published on these connections between lipid parameters in the blood and clotting risk. For example, triglycerides associate with the activity of factor seven, a key component of blood clotting. HDL inhibits the clumping of platelets, a key initiating factor in the formation of clots in the first place. Therefore, a low HDL level removes the break on clot formation. And oxidised LDL promotes both platelet clumping and also the secretion of something called tissue factor, the single most potent stimulus of clotting there is. Whatever way you look at it, what we consider to be lipid risk factors are in actual fact clotting risk factors. A high triglyceride level or a low HDL level is an independent risk factor for thrombosis. Annotated and summarized, easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.